Hello and welcome to this short recording about open access to books and book chapters. I'm sure most of you are familiar with open access. Open access is the principle that a research output should be made available free of charge with no barriers to access. There's lots of benefits to making your work open access. Your open access outputs may be referred to by more people in their own publications. Your work is available to a wider audience without subscription. So this means that people who don't have access to sources such as university libraries can read your work. This could be researchers in developing countries, practitioners and policymakers, or members of the public. Open access is included in the university criteria for academic promotion for some grades. There's a few different ways to achieve open access. If you're making something available yourself, like a data set, a report or free literature, you can choose to license it yourself. But if you want something that's published to be open access, you need to be aware of the publisher's open access policy and to check any correspondence and agreements that they send you. Many publishers require payment by or on behalf of the author if they offer an option to make the published version freely available. Some publishers will allow authors to deposit the text of the final accepted manuscript into an online repository where it can be made open access. And this is usually after an embargo period, typically of one to five years for books. Some publications are fully open access. Everything's automatically open access. Sometimes this is free, but more often the publisher will apply a charge. Book processing charges can be in the region of £10,000. In the published version, the version of record is freely available on the publisher site. This is often referred to as gold open access. And when the accepted version is available on a repository without charge, this is often referred to as green open access. And the university's approach is to take the green route wherever it is possible to do so. Before you submit a manuscript, you need to think about what is appropriate and how any mandatory costs will be covered. The main sources of open access requirements are the university, funders and the Research Excellence Framework Exercise or REV. There's some good guidance in the university policy documents and we recommend that you read them. The University of Glasgow's approach is that output should be made open access wherever possible. Some funders have open access requirements and please do consider those before submitting an output for publication. For example, Wellcome Trust have a long-standing requirement for books and book chapters to be made open access through PubMed Central PMC within six months of publication date. Authors can use an online deposit form to post a copy of their book to PMC. Wellcome Trust provide funds to cover open access fees and they require a CC BY license if we use their funds to pay for open access. Other Creative Commons licenses such as non-commercial and no derivative licenses are allowed, but Wellcome will not cover the costs if these licenses are chosen. UK Research and Innovation, UKRI, recently announced they will require open access to books from 2024. They're going to allow a 12 month embargo. They will require a CC BY license, though they will allow CC BY, NC and ND. Help providing additional budget for open access to books. Further guidance on exceptions and managing third party materials is expected in the second quarter of 2022, with additional information on conditions of funding expected by the third quarter of 2022. CC BY ND, Creative Commons, BY, no derivatives licensing, is one of the most restrictive licenses that prohibits sharing of a derivative work except by express authorization of the copyright holder. However, the ability to choose this license where appropriate might help alleviate concerns, for example, about a non-authorized publication of a translation or a non-authorized dissemination of a modified figure or graph um, or a database using elements of an existing one or perhaps a non-authorized dissemination of an education resource based on a licensed work. We expect further guidance to be provided by UKRI in due course. Further details are also awaited on future research excellence framework exercise requirements, but we do expect open access requirements will apply to books. European Research Council require open access to books that they've funded, so they've got to be open access within 12 months of publication or six months for subjects that are not social science or humanities. 
the open access costs are eligible for the grant if they are incurred during the lifetime of the project. And other funders, of course, may have terms and provide funds for open access to books. They do change, so make sure you're familiar with the funding terms of any grant that you're acknowledging. If you received funding for your research, you should always include an acknowledgement of your funding in the correct format. Always include the funder's reference number in the acknowledgement. If you don't acknowledge the funder, we may not be able to pay for gold open access where a publication would otherwise be eligible for our open access funds. Like most research organisations, we are trying to support our authors. There's a couple of initiatives the university is invested in. The university subscribes to the Open Book Publishers Library Membership Programme. Books for this are not accepted or rejected on the ability to pay, though authors are encouraged to try to get grants to cover publication costs if possible. The Open Access Press for Scotland is being set up with the aim of facilitating cost-effective open access to publications from Scottish universities. Initially aimed at books, but later considering other publication types. Hopefully, next year we'll be posting Open for Business advert for this service. So what do authors need to do? Check open access options before submission. If appropriate, you might want to discuss open access options with your publisher. Contact the library if welcome funded and we will help get money from welcome and administer the process. Include your award numbers in the acknowledgement of your book. Always use your university email address and affiliation as per the code of good practice and research. This will facilitate access to some of the publisher arrangements. Contact research-openaccess at glasgow.ac.uk if you want help with exploring your obligations and options. We can phone or we can strike up a conversation on Zoom or on Teams, not just by email. We will check the funder requirements in the publisher policy and we'll advise you how to proceed and if appropriate we'll arrange payment from funds that we hold. If authors are taking the green route, we'll deposit the manuscript in Enlighten, the University Publications Repository, and we'll make it available after the embargo period expires. And we'll also check compliance and do some reporting to funders. You should make sure that all parties are appropriately credited for the work that they have contributed to an output. And the university recommends the credit taxonomy of authorship. I'd also like to raise awareness of the Open Access Books Toolkit. It's a free and stakeholder agnostic resource launched in October 2020. And the aim is to help authors understand open access to books and to provide some practical support in getting published. There's various articles, for example, this one, which is a list of possible funding sources for open access books. And it's also a page about support that's typically available from your research organisation. Thank you for listening. Uh, we will update our resources as more information becomes available. But please contact us as at any time if you have any questions or suggestions or you wish to host another discussion session. Just ask if you want a Teams Zoom or phone call. We don't have to communicate by email. Thank you. <laughs>